Well, let me exp let me explain what happened. I'm in this hotel. I'm door dashing, right? What I usually do. I usually do pop tarts and Gatorade and things like that. Yeah, I place my order. It's ten minutes away. Guy tells me I I can't deliver to you. The hotel is closed. The hotel is closed. I'm I'm standing right there. I even went out where the cars pull around to be nice to meet him in the front. You know, like with the like chauffeur where the chauffeurs would come around. I'm like I'm right here. He sends me a picture of a completely different hotel. He says well, I don't see it. I'm here. He says, where you are is closed. So where I am is closed. The hotel looked open. I mean, there were people in it. There was stuff going on. Uh, I don't know. Steve Weiner here from GetRubix.com. And today we're going to be talking kind of a follow up off of the last video, which is about offboarding personal devices, right? I went I went into why you shouldn't onboard personal devices, uh, personal Windows devices into Intune. But apparently a lot of folks like that video and a lot of you have them in there and sure that happened during the pandemic but now it's time to get them out so we're going to be talking about how we're going to do that oh i mean that's traumatic once once doordash starts having a conversation with you that that's trauma right there you don't want that get rubik's solving for the modern workplace okay so i have a personal device here you can see it it's this desktop well, it says desktop, but we don't know what it is. It's let's see how much information we can get out of it. Hardware. It's a Windows 11 machine, obviously. Uh, looks like a VM based on the serial number. So we have this device here and we kind of went over all this last time, all the ramifications. But how do we, you know, get rid of it? So we're going to work off the assumption that you've stopped the bleeding. And by that, I mean, you've blocked personally enrolled devices. This is not something we need to have an ongoing remediation for. This is something that uh, we're not expecting more personal devices to come in. I mean, we could check for that in the future, but we don't need to. So I'm going to show you two ways to do this. The first is very simple. We're going to go through into and we're going to use a bulk device action. The second way we're going to do it is, you guessed it, with PowerShell and Microsoft Graph. OK, so what you can do when you're looking at your devices, if it's all devices or if it's just Windows, right? Uh, you're gonna click bulk device actions. Select your OS and we're gonna go Windows, device type. You could choose between cloud or physical devices. We want physical. And these are all the actions you can do. It's pretty cool, right? You could bulk sync, you could bulk rename. It's kind of interesting. We're gonna delete though, right? Uh, we don't want it in there. And if it's a personal device, it'll just let them know we're not you know, we're, we're not managing it anymore. So I'll show you that in a moment. So we'll go next. Now we have to select the devices to include. And this is pretty much a big filter, right? So we have Windows and we can search for individual devices, but the goal here is to filter for what we want. So we want ownership and of course, personal. And we should end up with our one device. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit select. And I'm gonna go next create. So that's creating a bulk device action. So now from the device perspective, right, we have the company portal, we've have the Intune management extension, right? We're signed in. And there we go. Rubik's dev has removed your workplace account and deleted all the information associated with apps uh, and password requirements. Okay. So it's kind of like it released it from management. So what does that look like for me? So if I click here, I have company portal. I can't get back in. I won't be able to because I am now blocking personal enrollments. That's good. I can't. That's the equivalent as if I just downloaded it from the store. Um, any apps that I had, like Microsoft Teams, if they were SSO'd in, it's going to prompt me to re-sign in. So the good news is everything that's mine stays intact and everything that's from the organization went away. So this is a good way for you to kind of just release it. Okay, now just for kicks, we're going to go ahead and graph explorer. I never remember the URL and I don't think I ever will. Okay, so I'm in the graph explorer and I'm going to switch this to beta because that's my preference. And we're going to go device management, manage devices. All right, so these are our devices. And if we go through, you can see owner type is company. Manage device owner type is company. So that's what they refer to as ownership. What we can do, same thing as like filtering an Intune. 
We do question dollar filter. And you see this value here, the manage device owner type and owner type. Those basically mean the same thing. So we can do owner type EQ uh, personal. And now we're going to get back the one personal device. And we can go look and yeah, see owner type is personal, whereas the rest are going to be company. Okay, so now that we know how to identify personal devices in the graph, uh, I created a script we can use, kind of go over at high level. Uh, you can either do the connect MG graph uh, to, you know, uh, authenticate yourself by signing in, or you can do an app reg and client secret if you like. Uh, essentially what it's doing is it's going to go through for you. It's going to call all the personal devices. And then once it grabs that variable, it's going to iterate through them and delete them. So I'm going to make this available on the GitHub and feel free to use it. Why would you use the graph method as opposed to the Intune console method? I don't know. Again, options are good. I think it also helps to understand how these things work, but there's nothing wrong with going through and filtering. It depends if you're going to integrate this into another solution. I know folks who have taken something like this, maybe they run it once a month. Maybe they run it based off some other action where if they detect a personal device and they see it, they just run this to kind of sweep through. So it's nice to have it and it'll be in the GitHub. So, you know, feel free to download it, check it out. Obviously, be careful because you are removing things. But just like I showed you before, the impact to the user isn't really a big deal. We do want to have comms, though, right? You don't just if somebody saw that and all of a sudden they're like, whoa, they didn't even know they were enrolled. So now they don't know what's happening. It's important to communicate with them and say, hey, um, we've detected your personal device is enrolled in our corporate Intune. You're going to see this notification that tells you we're releasing it. So something like that. Jump into the uh, Discord, share your thoughts, the usual stuff, and we'll be seeing you.